Thank you all. Delhi and Malay have exhibited a new commitment to their partnership, and we made references to those overtures and those efforts in our last conversation. We want to take it forward. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency Abdul Ghafoor Mohammed, the Foreign Secretary of the Maldives, is our guest of honor today. May I request Your Excellency to please come on stage and uh, the moderator for this session, Mr. Riz Khan, to also come here and take this forward. We're talking about the way forward for the Delhi Malay relationship. The way forward. Abdul Ghafoor Mohammed is the Foreign Secretary of the Government of the Maldives. He has served as the permanent representative to the United Nations office in Geneva and also to the World Trade Organization. Ghafoor was Malay's ambassador to Washington in 2010. They've moved us further apart, so I'm out of striking range. I can ask you tough questions now, so you can't hit me. <laughs> but um, I, I'm, I'm very honored to have uh, this chance to speak with you, Your Excellency. Um, interesting enough, we, we're, we can pretty much pick up on the conversation that was taking place just now, uh, looking at your country's uh, situation in South Asia and the, the building relationships uh, uh, between various uh, South Asian partners and those outside too. Uh, first and foremost, how, how do you see the Maldives positioning itself uh, within the South Asia uh, puzzle or platform, if you like, first. Thank you very much. Uh, before I start to answer your question, let me take this opportunity to thank the organizers, organizers for giving me this opportunity to speak about Maldives and India relations. But even before that, I think I also I owe an apology on behalf of my minister, who was your first choice and whom you had invited and who had, in fact, accepted. Unfortunately, he could not come because he is currently in the States on invitation by the Secretary of State, which in fact is reflective of the warmth with which Maldives has been welcomed back to the international community. And uh, having said that, I would now like to try and answer your question. Where do we find Maldives in South Asia? I think unlike many other South Asian countries, Maldives is blessed in many ways. We enjoy a homogeneity in our religion, in our linguistic connections with people, and our, our ethnicity, we see ourselves as Maldivians. And that oneness, the uh, sense of nationhood has always been strong with Maldivians. We do not have any issues with any of our neighbors. So we have been friends for centuries with uh, Sri Lanka, India, Bangladesh, the Bengali people earlier, earlier on, even uh, to the west of Maldives, uh, the Pakistan, uh, West Asia. So we have had this very blessed uh, sense of nationhood, and we've been lucky. We find ourselves a very lucky and blessed nation in South Asia. And, and basically what you're saying it does leave you in a position where you can be something of a bridge for nations. And you know, you're almost like, if, if I dare use the term, the Switzerland of <laughs> South Asia. Um, but I wonder how, how Maldives, the Maldives can build on that position, on that, uh, that strategic position within, within the South Asian nations to be able to be a, um, a bridge between the countries there. Encourage economic development, encourage uh, greater discourse. I think uh, for us to play the role of bridge like Switzerland, that would be something that is perhaps beyond our cap capabilities and perhaps trying to be way above our capabilities. But having said that, we are always there as a friend for every nation. We, as uh, a country that enjoys friendships with all, all other South Asian countries, we can speak to them. We have uh, 
if, if the need arises. But I have, to my knowledge, <laughs> no, of no incident or, or no times when Maldives has been used or have been asked or invited to be a peacemaker for any, uh, any issue in the region. One thing we were picking up in the, the previous discussion is um, how China's influence is growing in, in the South Asia region and how uh, member nations of the South Asian uh, community um, build their relationship with China and how it can affect th that, that relationship with other South Asian, Asian countries. How, how does that affect uh, your discussions too? Well, more recent China has had relations for a long time. China has been uh, a development provider been providing developer assistance to the Maldives for a very long time. But it has at no stage been uh, a threat to our relations with any other country. The only difference has been last during the period of the last government. And I think this was played on deliberately by that government. And I must say uh, it was an ignorance and a an move and uh, something that they they uh, was not in the interest of the of the nation. The they were trying to use India-China card for domestic political reasons. A very short-sighted move, because I think our relations with India go much further and much deeper than to be threatened that easily. I think India understood what was going on, and so did most of our politicians in the opposite side as well. Because there has always been, I think, I believe personally, a trust, a friendship between the two countries. There has been, uh, there is good faith. We are confident that India has never been, is not and will never be a threat to the Maldives. It may be very large, it may be uh, very mighty, and we may be small, we may be uh, not a military power. But we do not fear India, and we don't have to fear India, because India is our friend. You don't fear friends mm -hmm. as such. And this has been proved time and again. Whenever we have had, uh, in times of crisis, India has always been there with a helping hand as was alluded to during the panel discussions here in 1988, during the tsunami crisis, much uh, later, more recently, uh, with our, when we had the water crisis. Apart, quite apart from that, the relationship that we enjoy is reflected in the recent visa agreement that was signed during President Solis' visit to India. That's what I was going to ask you, isn't it? How, how now the current uh, government in, in the Maldives is building on that relationship with India and uh, strengthening its ties with the country too. You were referring to the, the signing there as well. How, what, in what areas do you see a, a growing capacity uh, of relationship between India and Maldives? In every aspect. I think it's, uh, it's not a new relationship or this is not, nothing new. Hmm. I think the relationship between India has been put back on the back burner by the previous government. And uh, there had been a distance between the two countries. But I think uh, the, as soon as the new government was elected and President Soli invited Prime Minister Modi for his inauguration, and when uh, Prime Minister Modi accepted that invitation very graciously, that was a signal that our friendship was back on, that things will get back to normal and get back, our relationship will once again be as close and trusted, trusting as it had been in the past. The fact that uh, our president's first foreign visit was to India was an indication that we are aware and we are cognizant of the uh, importance of India to the Maldives and that is also an, an assurance to the Indian government that we would be cognizant of India's strategic interests in the region 
and we would not be a threat or we would not do anything that would be threatening to the security interests of India, just as we do not expect India to be a threat to the Maldives. Yeah, there's, a, there's a sense at a global level that um, the, the kind of st situation for the USA under its current leadership for Europe with its uh, squabbles with Brexit and, and other kind of dissent within the European community, that eyes are, are no longer turning towards the West. Um, from the position of the Maldives, where do you see the global community now? Are, are they shifting their view away from the West and looking at the rise of the rest, as, as it's been often called? Well, I mean, there has often been said lately that 21st century is, the century, is an Asian century. And some might say it will be the, some, some say it is the uh, century of the Chinese, others might say it's the uh, century of the Indians. But what, whatever you must say, it is an Asian century. Asia is uh, in, in ascendance. And uh, perhaps the, uh, uh, which is, this is the history of the world. Civilizations uh, rise for and new civilization arise. Of course, Perhaps, the shift, yeah. shifting dynamics. And yeah. I wonder if there is that shifting dynamic to the degree that people are saying that America's strength has waned and uh, that Europe is, is in disarray. Does it have any direct impact on the Maldives? Uh, but the, I think it will be the same impact, direct or indirect, because we, when you're a small country, we can't afford to take many, much negative impacts. Mm. But uh, yes, a world that is not stable, a world that is in chaos, is always uh, a danger to small countries like the Maldives. And uh, unlike before, South Asia is no longer a backwater. South Asia is now what in modern uh, parlance you call a happening region. I mean, whether, you look, uh, whether you're talking about security, whether you're talking about the uh, entertainment industry, the so, uh, social factors, the technology, all these are happening in the region. And we want to be part of that. But similarly, if there are negative impacts, when uh, terrorism, radicalism, mm. uh, well, when all these things arise, th that negative impact will also affect the Maldives negatively. So we want to see a world that is peaceful and stable, and that is in the interest of all small countries, I think. I was thinking to some degree, because um, Maldives, the Maldives obviously has a strong interest or a strong benefit from tourism. And of course, if you know, uh, you've had traditionally a lot of Western tourists coming, if, if their, their economies start to uh, uh, go through any stress, whether it has any impact on that. And, and the potential for the Maldives to also grow other areas of its offerings, if you like, in the same way that uh, small states like Singapore were able to build themselves as financial hubs or technical hubs. I wonder if there's any kind of aspiration in the Maldives to try to grow those sectors. Yes, we have always tried to diversify our economy beyond tourism. Tourism has been a boon and has provided much of our uh, ways and means to develop in the last few decades. Uh, even tourism has been diversified from the traditional tourism that we more or less invented, the mm. one, uh, one resort, one hotel, one island, one resort concept, mm. uh, to also now to include the guest house uh, type resorts, that is uh, liveaboard tourism. So, and our, our market is no longer just the Western Europeans. It's much more wider, uh, much more diversified market. Uh, the effects, the tourism, as you mentioned, is a very vulnerable uh, industry. Mm. And this was, hit, this was uh, made very clear to us during the uh, 2001, 9-11 uh, attack that happened in U.S., half a world away. For the first time in 2001, our tourism had negative growth. So an incident that happened much further, we thought we had nothing to do with it. And yet, the impact it had on Maldives tourism industry and the economy was quite significant. So yes, when uh, these, their economies are affected, we will be also affected. Hence, I was asking about the need to diversify and, uh, and have service-based offerings and so on, look at 
developing IT and, and uh, uh, the finance sectors, for example? Yes, this, uh, this is something uh, the new government is very keen on. Uh, I think um, the, the slogan that the new government came on was Dazira Raj or Island Nation, mm. Mm. which is about decentralization, developing Maldives as a nation of islands, uh, not developing Maldives like on the city or a land uh, country, uh, a country with a huge landmass. Right. We have small islands, we have many small islands, and each one of these islands need to be developed. Right. And so our development model has to be unique, that is fit, that is, uh, that can fit to the uh, environmental and ecological needs of our country. And of course you do, yeah, Maldives is of course known for being at uh, uh, environmental risk in particular, and how much, uh, I wonder, you're trying to mitigate those, those, uh, that situation. This is a real risk for Maldives. The environmental risk is not uh, something that is of academic interest to Maldives. It's existential. And we feel it, we live it every day. I mean, when people talk about uh, sea level rise, mm, we see it. We see the sea uh, every day. We see it both as our friend and as our foe. It can, just as it gives us sustenance, it can also provide dangers. And given the very, uh, very uh, the ecological vulnerabilities we have, the climate change impact will be felt much worse in the Maldives, along with other similar smaller countries, than in many other parts of the world. We are in the front line of states that will be impacted most by climate change. I was wondering how you're mitigating that situation, what, what efforts there are to try to get a handle on it at least. Well, we have taken uh, various adaptive measures, which has uh, been throughout centuries. We have practiced certain adaptive measures. But I think uh, there are also opportunities now that has arisen because of technology change into more, uh, what you call the renewable energies. Right. As you know, former President Rashid has been champion of renewable energy use in the Maldives. And this is the, uh, the policy of our new government as well, that we should move much faster, uh, as fast as we could, uh, towards employing renewable energy more away from fossil fuels. And um, for this, also uh, hope to get assistance from the world community because the climate change uh, vulnerability that we face is not because of our doing. This is a responsibility of everyone. But the victims of climate change are the smaller countries, island countries, and often the most uh, Poorest countries. I think you need to have words, Mr. Trump. <laughs> he doesn't seem to believe anything's happening. But then well, let me, uh, just, uh, Minister, just wrapping up quickly, uh, a final thought. Ideally, if, uh, if, if you could, you know, have a, uh, have a grip on it, where would you like to see your country in the next 10 years? A peaceful, prosperous, stable country that is democratic and having strong institutions with no corruption. I think uh, we, as a started off saying we have been blessed and I think we should preserve that and it is a responsibility for that uh, before, before on all of us, politicians, uh, all the Maldivians to ensure that the blessedness that we have received that almost we take for granted is God given mm. that we preserve what is God given can often be taken away by men. And that is what we should be ensure that men does not take away what God has given us. Uh, are you seeing the younger generations of uh, Maldivians actually paying attention to this? Are you seeing a change in their attitude towards the country and a greater sense of responsibility? I think there's a very strong sense of na nationalism that is emerging in the country and also a demand from the politicians to be much more honest, much more transparent, and to ensure that our 
institutions deliver to the people. I think our, edu our population is becoming much more educated and aware, and along with that, they are also demanding better governance, more transparent governance, and this bodes well for our future. Well, Minister, I thank you so much for taking the time. Wish you a lot of luck uh, there in the Maldives in, uh, in the coming years as well. Thank you for being with us. Please, around. Thank you very much. Minister. Thank you.